Hey party members, welcome back to LARP 101 Character Building Part 2. Okay, to summarise, I am off to a LARP in March called The Wild Hunt. An evening of mayhem and mystery in the company of ancient creatures and great heroes. And I'm in the process of building my character. In part one of this series, I went through how I come up with my character concept and the rather long winding road of how I build my character's backstory uh, using my 5321 plan. And that essentially comes down to five key events, three positive personality traits, two negative traits, and one secret. If you've not watched uh, part one of these two videos, um, I really recommend you do so before you continue on with this one. So the link is in the little card at the top. Okay, no point in, you know, holding this off any further. Let's get on with it. Welcome to part two of character building. So step three of character building, personality. So as per my 5321 plan, I need three positive personality traits and two negative ones. So let's start with positive personality traits because at the end of the day, everybody likes writing nice stuff about their characters. Positives are usually much easier to write than negatives and it's really tempting to add a lot of them. However, that can make your character seem really overloaded. And if you overload your character, essentially what you're going to do is you're not going to be able to portray them as well as you would like. And that's because when you have so many positive personality traits dictating your character's every action, you have no flexibility and you'll struggle even to breathe as them. It's really important to let yourself have some space to develop your character as you play. Um, because if you get into a rut with them because you essentially know how your character would react to everything, you're just going to find yourself not having as much fun as you would like. And having that space to develop can be really fun. It would be really interesting to find out that your character does not react to a situation the way you originally thought they might. And that's absolutely okay. Growth and development of characters is one of my favourite bits of roleplay. It's all part of the fun. So what traits are we going to give my character for the wild hunt? Well, number one, I want her to be a really caring person. And especially for people who struggle to defend themselves. I mean, come on, this woman has witnessed a lot of tragedy throughout her life. We've already decided she's a monster hunter, so she's going to have seen a lot of victims of these horrible creatures. And she is a French revolutionary, which essentially means she's going to, you know, witness the mistreatment of the, you know, peasant population of France. Yeah, she's, she's seen some stuff. So that would likely make her really empathetic to the plight of others. So if she sees somebody else in trouble at the hunt, she's going to want to help them. I sense me throwing myself into danger to protect others way more than I want to at this event. Well, committed to it now. So on that topic, number two, I might as well make her really brave. You know, it's the same sort of premise really, isn't it? She's a revolutionary, she's a monster hunter, she's killed a lot of people. You know, she's gonna need some you know, courage to do that. It's all par for the course so far. And number three, I want her to have a sweet tooth. Eh, positive or negative trait, you can kind of, you know, vary on this one. I say it's positive because I love sweets. Uh, she'll have grown up in a period of history where sweets were generally a luxury. She probably wasn't that well off because I don't imagine, you know, monster hunting and stabbing vampires and werewolves to death uh, is very lucrative. So I can see, you know, having things like cakes and stuff is probably not something she regularly did. You know, but it's 300 years later and while she's been with the Wild Hunt that time, I can see her procuring, you know, some sweets as uh, time goes on. And, you know, I think it's nice to have sort of that little, you know, sense of personal luxury for herself. And I definitely think it will be a positive trait because if anything, um, I've decided she's going to really love to share. So uh, if you see me wandering around uh, the game at any point, if you're going to play, uh, and you see me with some sweets or some cake and you want some, feel free to ask. I may probably say yes. So that was quite straightforward. Uh, let's move on to negative traits. Uh, negative traits are a generally a lot harder to write. 
because there's always this temptation to play your character as a more idealized version of what you have in your head and you know human beings are flawed so it's really nice to sort of have that character in your head who you know looks better than you and was much more popular at school and did all those things that you know you wish you did because you know like I said it's an idealized version of yourself doesn't work out great for role play though and the thing is what you also have to kind of remember is that it's actually not possible to play a perfect character and that's mainly because part of your character is open to interpretation from others what you see as a positive personality trait others might perceive as a negative one so somebody who's let's say really brave and bold uh you know full-on gryffindor uh may be portrayed uh by an outsider as being uh, reckless and um, rather stupid. And in a similar vein, somebody who might be seen as very kind, caring and cautious may be seen as weak and cowardly. You can't control how other people react to your character, so therefore you cannot 100% control how your character is perceived by others either. So I find that if you plan for negative personality traits before your character gets going, it allows you to take that step back away from your character and try to understand how others might perceive them. So thinking about that, I've decided that the two personality traits that I want uh, for my character is number one, uh, she's going to have a really short temper. Anger is the theme of the chosen, uh, my faction for the game, as it is. So it makes sense that she would be a rather angry, angry person. You know, let's tie it in and stick to that character brief. And anger is a great uh, emotion to role play with. Uh, angry people can often dominate conversations, so they can be quite assertive. A lot of people will end up listening to them whether they want to or not because they shout over others. And it's quite dynamic role play because people will very rarely be quite passive with someone who is uh, angry. The risk, however, of playing an angry character is that because they can kind of, you know, take over the space and take over the conversation is that they can express a lot of dominance over other characters, which means that there is a risk that other players might find themselves being kind of, you know, squashed by the personality of that angry person. And that's something you really need to remember because essentially this is a collaborative game, uh, part of a collaborative hobby, which means you are playing with other people and they have just as much right to, as you to have a great game. So if you're going to be playing something like that, it's important to keep an idea in your head of how your negative personality traits might affect others. So in my case, while playing an angry character, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to make sure that I am not shouting people down, I am not overwhelming them, and I generally make sure that they are okay in a space with me. So thinking about other negative personality traits, I've decided to go off another one which plays off the positive traits I have, uh, which is the specifically the one about being quite caring. So I've decided that she's going to be really nosy. Um, she's going to be all up in other people's business and people are going to hate her for it. I hope not, but they probably will. Fact is, she wants to help people and to help people she kind of feels like she needs to know what's going on with people. So she's going to be up in everyone's business. So she's probably going to eavesdrop, she's probably going to be listening in on stuff and she's probably going to insert her opinion into conversations that she wasn't even invited into. This is another thing I'm going to have to be careful with because that kind of thing is really easy to upset people. You're kind of treading the line between um, being nosy and being rude uh, and generally ruining other people's games. So I've got to be sort of make sure, you know, if people are having sort of private conversations to not be that nosy. But if I've got a group of people standing around together, like, you know, they're being a bit quiet, but in the open, you know, I'm going to snuggle in there and sort of you know see what they're talking about and hopefully not get killed for it negative traits are so hard 
because you don't want to upset people but you do want to have some realistic idea of you know how you come into conflict with the players but the thing is very simply I don't want to upset people out of game so I'm just going to keep an eye on it and not push too hard and the thing is as well as I need to remember is that I don't know most of the people at this game so I don't know enough about them to be confident as to whether they would be happy to get into a negative interaction with me uh, so I'm just going to play it very carefully because I don't want to push boundaries or upset people unnecessarily. Yeah, I'm kind of rambling on about it now. So uh, long story short, um, be careful with negative personality traits. Make sure you're communicating with people. Um, be prepared to pull back if you are upsetting people and make sure everybody is having a good game, not just you. Um, oh, and one thing to also keep in mind is that there are often rules and mechanics in place to help people signal whether they are comfortable or not. Uh, if you're going to a game and you're going to play something that may upset people, make sure you are really familiar with those signals, make sure that you are constantly communicating about whether people are comfortable or not, and make sure you're aware of all of the rules so you can help everybody have a lovely, enjoyable game. It's your responsibility to ensure that your character does not create negative bleed for other people. Okay, moving on, step four, motivation. So what is my aim of the game? Motivation is pretty much key to any role play you go to because at the end of the day, you need a reason for being there. It is essentially what makes your personal game work for you. If you want to keep playing your character, you need to make sure that there is something that is constantly driving your character forward because if you don't, your character is going to become stagnant pretty quickly and you're going to get bored of them. And this can apply no matter how long you have played a character. I have seen many a player stagnate in character roles that they no longer enjoy because they don't have any goals for those characters anymore, but they don't want to stop playing them because of essentially a sunk cost fallacy. And then it's no longer fun and they kind of struggle a bit and then they're pretty much not enjoying their game and that really, really sucks. So it is such an important thing to make sure that you know what your character's motivation is every single time you get into character. Your motivations can absolutely change as your games go on, but it is really, really important that you actually have one. So when you're building your character, you need to not only just be thinking about what's brought them to the game, but essentially what's pushing them through it. And this is probably a really good place to insert that one secret that I was talking about in my 5-3-2-1 plan. Secrets are absolutely great because essentially it gives you this one little thing that players can learn about your character as the game goes on. And it also gives some direction as to where you want to take your character that is completely uninfluenced by the characters they meet throughout the game. So I will tell you what my character's motivation and therefore their secret is. Uh, which means I'm going to put a spoiler alert in right now. If you're going to the Wild Hunt game and you want to interact with me, um, I would advise that you skip to the uh, time thing that I will put in on the screen right now um, so that you don't hear what is actually going on with my character so you can learn it in game. If you do want to watch, that's absolutely fine. But remember, if you don't know it in game, then you don't know it at all. So, uh, you know, no taking in out of character information. This is gonna be a bit unique because I usually wouldn't talk about my character's secrets on this channel because obviously it's a bit of a role play thing that I want people to discover about my character as the game goes on. However, I'm pretty confident uh, this could change that I won't be playing this character again. And therefore I don't see any reason why I shouldn't just tell you. Secrets are kind of self-explanatory. If you tell everyone your character's secrets from the get-go, then the mystery isn't one. There's no mystery. Everyone knows. You don't need to be a mysterious stranger from a far off land, but it is kind of nice to have something about your character that nobody else knows. So, yet again, if you don't want to know, uh, go to this time once again uh, and skip to it right now so that you can go straight past the secret and everything is fine. Right, you're gone? Everyone ready? Yeah? Great. So the secret that I've decided for my character is essentially she's going to be looking for a way out of the wild hunt. I have said it a few times to emphasize this fact, 
She's been in this hunt for over 300 years. Yeah. She, she wants out. She's curious about the, essentially the real world again. So she would really like a way to be able to go out and rejoin it that won't result in her immediate death. Because I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure that people retire from the wild hunt. And I mean, especially one of the chosen who were selected for the hunt for specific reasons. I mean, do they get to retire? But again, this kind of comes back to the French revolutionary of my character. She comes from a time when her fate was dictated by people far more powerful than herself. And that's not on for her because she has also seen that people can make a difference in their lives if they really want to. And so she wants to take control of her own destiny once again. And her own personal destiny is something that she would be willing to fight for. So I don't see any reason why she wouldn't just go for it. Maybe she'll find the answer, maybe she won't. But one fundamental thing I know about her character is that she's got to try. So there you go, that's the big secret. I can't wait to see how it plays out. So next bit, step five of building my character, the name. Your character's name is always either the first thing you think of or almost the very last thing you think of. Sometimes a name appears straight in your head. It's a name that you have heard a long time ago and you've been wanting to create a character around it for a while. It could be a role play character you have like in tabletop. It could just be a name you really love, but it's already there and you're ready for it. And sometimes finding a name for your character can be the most difficult thing you have ever done. It's a combination of wanting to have a really cool name, a really unique name, and also a name that people are not going to make fun of you for. Truthfully, if you have a name for a character that you really like and your character carries it really, really well, it pretty much doesn't matter what you name your character. Um, offensive words uh, being the exception to this. Don't do that, no one likes that person. But it doesn't matter if your character's name sounds a bit dumb or a bit cliche, if your character is you know, awesome enough to carry that name off and they all carry that name off and no one will care. I personally like to have character names that have some meaning towards what the character is like and what their story is like, which means unfortunately I often scour uh, numerous baby name websites trying to find names that sound right and have an appropriate style meaning. I mean, there's thousands of these websites like all over the place. You can literally just type in, you know, name, gender, meaning, and sometimes even like nationality. And you'll get like a hundred different websites with hundreds of different names each uh, that you can sort of go, no, 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 that sounds good. And if that fails, you can always turn to the staples of fantasy books, fantasy games, fantasy films and TV shows. And eventually something will probably come to mind. This option tends to not be great for LARP because if there's one thing you'll discover really quickly uh, if you've never LARPed before is that a lot of LARPers also read the same fantasy books, watch the same fantasy films and TV shows and play the same fantasy games as you. So if you have a name for one of those that you really like, um, odds are almost everyone will know where it came from. So uh, be careful uh, with those kind of names because uh, you don't want people to think you're just playing a version of that character in whatever fantasy game you've appeared in. And let's face it, that's not uh, what you want because we're all far more creative than that. So if you do have a character name that you really love and you want to use, try and stick it on a character who's very different from the, you know, namesake that you've chosen um, just to make it clear that you are not just playing a version of that namesake in whatever game you've stumbled into. Uh, if you've been watching other videos on my channel, especially like my last live q and I will have mentioned that I've actually chosen the name Garnet for my character. And I've chosen this name for a couple of reasons. Obviously Garnet is a bright red gemstone, um, which obviously ties in very nicely to the Little Red Riding Hood theme that I've got going for my character. 
However, there is also a bit of an inner meaning to that name, which I quite like. So garnet actually comes from an old French word, which traces back to Latin, which essentially means pomegranate. You yeah, know, which is a nice bright red fruit. And pomegranates in Greek mythology are associated with Persephone, uh, essentially the goddess of flowers slash spring, um, depending on, you know, which books you read, uh, who is was essentially trapped in the underworld for several months of the year after she ate some pomegranate seeds uh, while she was down there. And if you don't know it, it's a really great myth to explain the seasons. Uh, I, it's one of my favourite stories and I would really recommend that you just sort of read an account of it because it's really, really interesting. But the thing is why, why I liked this meaning was because it's a story of a young woman uh, tied to a life through forces beyond her control. And I thought that, that was quite poetic for a young woman uh, who has been snatched essentially out of her mortal life and has been tied to the wild hunt by forces beyond her means. And I just really kind of like that parallel between Persephone being trapped in the underworld and Garnet being trapped in the wild hunt and I thought that would be a rather interesting dynamic to keep in mind as I play the character. So you know, now we've got extra thinking, we've got Red Riding Hood and the French Revolutionary and now we're sticking some Greek mythology in there. Uh, it's a lot of complicated thinking for a character I'm playing for one night. But you know, we're actually at the end of it and Garnet is now fully fledged. Somehow. We got through it, we've got the backstory, I know what her personality is going to be like, she's got a name, she's got some motivation. I think I'm set. All she needs now really is to be dressed. Which means it's time for costuming and makeup and most of my costume is here now, thank goodness, so that video can start being put together. Which means you can see that video in two weeks, which is about the next part of my Wild Hunt series of videos. So if you have not subscribed, I don't know why not, subscribe right now, the little you know, button is down there, hit subscribe. Uh, and like and share this video if you haven't already. I hope you're staying safe, I hope you're staying healthy, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on a battlefield soon. Bye.